this video, we go through the 10 essential steps for successful establishment of subtropical grasses with the assistance of evergreen farming agronomist Phil Barrett-Leonard and leading farmers. Farmers in Western Australia's northern ag region now have access to a reliable package for establishing subtropical perennial grasses. The key elements are furrow sowing to overcome non-wetting soils, reliable time of sowing being spring, and improved weed control to reduce competition. Overcoming these three issues has seen a very reliable package developed. Farmers using this establishment package are now achieving excellent establishment right across their paddocks, just like this one. When sowing perennial grass pastures, it pays to plan ahead. Problem pests such as kangaroos and rabbits often need to be controlled 6 to 12 months in advance. And erosion prone paddocks often need to be sown to a cereal cover crop to protect them during establishment. Panic and Rhodes grass are the two most commonly sown subtropical grasses north of Perth. Panic is the standout due to its palatability and drought tolerance. Rhodes grass is very useful for soil stabilisation. The two are commonly sown together as they compl complement each other well. The quality of subtropical grass seed can vary quite widely. It can range from anywhere as low as 10% to as high as 70%, but a typical figure is often 30 to 50%. Seeding rates need to be adjusted according to seed quality. Dormancy can be an issue with panic grass. It pays to look at the seed certificate and especially look at the fresh seed figure. Fresh seed equals dormant seed. Dormancy does break down over time. It typically takes six to nine months to do so it can pay to purchase seed that was harvested in Queensland the previous year for sowing this year in Western Australia. Subtropical perennial grass seeds often come coated. The coating helps them flow through seeding machinery which can be a real advantage with a species like Rhodes grass where the seed is very fluffy and difficult to, to get to flow through the machinery. The disadvantage of coating is that it reduces the number of seeds per kilogram, making it more expensive. It's essential to have 100% weed and insect control prior to establishing subtropical perennial grasses as they are very weak competitors and cannot stand any competition. When we're trying to get good establishment, the most important things is your weed control prior to sowing, especially broadleaf weed control, cape weed, uh, radish in particular, I've got a real snout on radish, and Patterson's Curse. Um, and when you go into sow a paddock, everything must be dead or dying. It's important to leave some ground cover after seeding on erosion prone soils to minimise the risk of erosion. Um, this can be achieved by um, a different stray, spray strategy, um, leaving more grass. And the other option is to sow a cereal the year before planting perennials and sow into the stubble left over. The biggest issue in establishment is not to try sowing into bare ground. If there's not a little bit of dry matter there to hold the soil together while the uh, perennials are getting established, we're getting we, we get blows and uh, yeah, you're worse off than you are to start with if, you, if that happens to you. The ideal spray program prior to establishing perennial grasses involves a broadleaf spray six to eight weeks before sowing to remove all broadleaf weeds, followed by a glyphosate based knockdown spray a few weeks before sowing. This means that there's some grass remaining in the paddock at sowing to minimise the risk of erosion. 
Spring is the ideal time to establish subtropical perennial grasses. They require rising soil temperatures and moisture to germinate. In spring, soil temperatures are rising all the time, but moisture is declining, so there's a trade-off. Uh, going early may mean more moisture, but inadequate soil temperature, whereas going later may mean temperatures are adequate, but moisture is limiting. In the northern ag region, the further north you are, the earlier you sow. So around Geraldton, often early to mid-August, from Dandarragon to Geraldton, often mid to late August, and around Jinjin and Dandarragon, often late August to early September is the ideal time. I'd say the key things to avoid that I've found with the establishment of uh, perennials is um, not to go too late is the seasons we've had, the seasons have uh, stopped quite suddenly and, and a few seasons we just didn't have a spring and so I'd rather go in early as in um, mid-August, even early August so it can just sit there and wait and if it does cut off early which it has been doing lately um, it still get a bit of rain. There is a stop-go decision point at this stage which depends on the prevailing seasonal conditions. If stored soil moisture is limiting, consider deferring sowing until the following year. Probably avoid sowing them if you haven't got a good moisture bank there, because you can run into a bit of trouble. You can actually start to get uh, wind erosion on your seeded plots if there's not enough moisture to germinate them. Most subtropical perennial grasses are sown on highly non-wetting sandy soils. Removing the non-wetting topsoil by furrow sowing is a critical element in achieving success. Farmers have developed a range of different machinery for furrow sowing using either points or discs. Uh, they both um, need to remove somewhere from five to 10 centimetres of non-wetting topsoil to create a furrow for the seed to be placed in. Um, this allows the seed to be sitting on wet soil uh, and for them to germinate quickly. The farmers that have achieved the most successful establishment have often used modified machinery for sowing their perennial pastures. This involved, involves either scalping points or discs to remove most of the non-wetting topsoil so that the seed can be placed in wet subsoil. Uh, often the row spacings are 50 to 60 centimetres wide and this allows room for the non-wetting topsoil to be placed in between each furrow. Um, the furrows are often 50 to 100 mils deep depending on the depth of the non-wetting topsoil and press wheels are used to press the seed into the bottom of the furrow. Some farmers have used conventional cropping machinery to establish perennial grasses. This might be air seeders fitted with knife points and press wheels or triple disc drills. These machines can be successful um, but tend to work best in, in years where there's plenty of rainfall and, non -wetting, and the non-wetting soil is not so much of an issue. They can be quite unreliable in years with dry springs or where non-wetting soil is at its worst. A converted combine especially set up for sowing perennials is recommended. Subtropical grass seed is not cheap, so it's important to calibrate the seeder to ensure the correct sowing rate is used. As a general rule of thumb, sowing rates are in the order of two to five kilos per hectare. Um, when using coated seed or seed of lower germination, tend to go to the higher sowing rate. And when seed quality is high and the seed is bare, then seeding rates can be at the lower end of that spectrum. Subtropical grass seeds are very small and need to be sown shallow. We tend to recommend a seeding depth of 5 to 10 millimetres. Rhodes grass doesn't like germinating from depth, so favours a shallower seeding depth, whereas panic grass can germinate from a little deeper. One of the issues when furrow sowing is the potential for sand infill in the furrows. This should be avoided if possible by maintaining ground cover on the paddock. If a large amount of sand infill does occur, 
it's more likely that a greater percentage of panic will germinate and less rhodes grass. The bright colour of the seed coating also enables easy checking of seeding depth. When furrow sowing, speed can be a critical issue. The faster the machine is travelling, the more soil throw there is, which can potentially lead to furrow infill. Often uh, tractor speed is between 5 and 10 kilometres an hour, which enables the soil from the furrows to be neatly placed in the interrow and not thrown into the adjacent furrow. It's important to regularly inspect your paddock after seeding to ensure that weeds and insects don't cause problems. A number of insects can uh, attack subtropical grass seedlings, including aphids, cutworm, red-legged earth mite, and later on wingless grasshoppers. So regular inspection and spraying if necessary is important. The other issue can be weeds, um, broadleaf weeds, uh, such as radish, uh, cape weed, or summer weeds such as melons can be controlled with a selective broadleaf herbicide. Summer weeds such as melons can become an issue in newly sown paddocks, but the decision to spray needs to be carefully thought through. If the density of perennials is on the low side, then a few melons could be a good thing in that they provide ground cover to reduce the risk of erosion. But if the density of perennials is high, then it's an easy decision spray the melons and conserve the moisture for the perennial grasses. A subtropical perennial grass pasture should last a lifetime, so don't wreck it by overgrazing in the first year. If there's plenty of summer and autumn rain, then the initial grazing could occur as early as three to six months after sowing. But if the summer and autumn are dry and the plants are small and weak, then delay the initial grazing until at least the break of the following season, which is nine to 10 months after sowing. If you don't flog it after, like, give it a chance to get established. Yeah. You know, maybe five or six months, I usually run a mob of sheep over it just to take the tops off it and sort of educate it, teach it to put its head down and stay close, rotate your grazing. Um, don't over flog it, just take the top two third off, leave a third behind and you look after it, it'll look after you. In summary, the key steps for successful establishment of subtropical grasses are plan ahead, select well adapted species, buy good quality seed, 100% weed control while still maintaining ground cover at seeding, sow in late winter to early spring depending on the location, Use a cedar set up for furrow sowing with press wheels and a wide row spacing. Sowing two to five kilograms of seed per hectare at a depth of five to 10 millimetres. Use a suitable sowing speed to minimise soil throw into adjacent furrows. Regular post seeding checks for pests and weeds and ensure the grasses are strong and well anchored before the first grazing. For more information, refer to DAFRA Bulletin 4840, Establishment Guide for Subtropical Grasses, Key Steps to Success, and the other establishment videos in this series.